In this video, I'm going to teach you an exercise to help you improve your shading in your drawings. You will learn how to render geometric solids. And this is going to allow your drawings to have greater dimension and the illusion of form. What's up creatives, Timothy Jan here. I'm a draftsman, painter, and a teacher, making videos to help improve your art. What's the biggest problem you're having in making the artwork of your dreams? Let me know down in the comments so I can make a video to help you. Stick around to the end and I'll let you know about a free resource that you can use in your studies. Let's learn something. One of the fastest ways to improve your drawings is to increase your ability to represent form. This skill is a huge stumbling block for many beginner artists. This is one of my major obstacles I had when learning. If you're anything like me, the seemingly simple skills don't happen naturally. Many of the artists we admire are outstanding at this skill. The volume that Caravaggio gets in his paintings is outstanding. If we look at Bougarou's work, the solidity and statue of forms is extremely powerful. Considering more painterly painters, such as Nikolai Fechin or Lovis Corinth, their understanding and handling of the volume in their forms allows them to break conventions. At times, they completely obliterate the contour of the object and still have paintings with tremendous presence and volume. Seeing these finished works and attempting to just replicate them often leaves us lacking in our true understanding of how the skill is applied. In art school, an attempt is made for students to understand the form by studying geometric solids and folds in fabric. If you are able to understand form on a simple level, you can extrapolate it out to far more complex uses. In drawing, form is shown through light and shadow. The way you render or shade your object creates the illusion of form. There are two types of form, geometric and organic. Geometric forms are mathematically precise. They comprise of cubes, spheres, cylinders, cones, and pyramids. They are unforgiving in their perfection. Your misunderstanding of the geometric forms is what's holding your artwork back from getting to the next level. So often we direct our attention to fancy colors and mediums or crazy textures and compositions to try to improve our artwork. But at the core, our mistakes that are holding our artwork back is a misunderstanding of how the form works on geometric solids. Our understanding of the geometric solids becomes limited or flawed, and this really, really holds you back. If you want to improve rapidly, time invested in studying and truly understanding the geometric solids will rapidly increase your understanding and application of these in both your drawings and your paintings. Organic forms are found in nature. They are curvy, flowy, and difficult to clearly define. You will see them in landscapes, figures, and florals. These initially tend to be seen as technically a little bit more forgiving. But true mastery at these is built on a deep understanding of the geometric solids. Properties of light. Now that we know what form is, we have to represent it. To show the illusion of form, you will need to show the illusion of light hitting an object. If we direct a single light source at a sphere, we can isolate the properties of the light. The form will be split into a light shape and a shadow shape. This separation is indicated by the terminator, or attached shadow accent. Within the light shape, we find the highlight, light, and the middle tone, sometimes referred to as half tone. Within the area we've identified as the shadow, we find the attached shadow accent, attached shadow, cast shadow, reflected light, and cast shadow accent. I know this is super technical and kind of a little bit boring, but with a little bit of an understanding of how the world actually works, your artwork is gonna really, really improve. I recommend to all of my apprentices to memorize these terms, to truly understand where they sit on the form. You should be able to do this completely from memory, at will, in your sketchbook. This will help with two things. One, you'll get a better understanding of what's actually happening in the form, and two, you're going to be able to better explain to other people what's going on in your drawing. I studied at six different art schools. and the terminology was never consistent. It's super frustrating. Artists are trying to describe an effect that they're seeing in their visual field. Unlike music and dance, there's no uniformity in the language. Here you can see me demonstrating the forms with black charcoal and white pastel. 
This exercise can be done in pencil, oil paint, watercolor, or pastel. Really, any medium that you work with, you should do this at least once with that medium. The first step is to draw the form out. Keep your lines light so that they don't fight against you. The second step is to indicate the shadow values. So, it's sad to say that you really can't avoid studying the geometric solid. Once the shadow values are indicated, the middle tone is laid out. In this technique, the black and white are going to mix together. So this initial layout is a preparatory for their interaction. One thing to keep in mind that when you are studying these geometric solids is that you want to look for the simplicity of it. Think about the larger concepts and really focus on the big, broader concepts. Now indicate the highlight and begin to build the values in the light. Work to finish the middle tone values. With artwork specifically, there's some really, really deep rabbit holes that you can get swept up into and kind of lose your overall focus and what it was that you were trying to accomplish. The more that you understand your end goal, the better your overall study is going to be regardless. So think about where you want to go in the end, how you're going to focus your studies day to day to get you there, and extract out only the specific things that you need to accomplish your goal. It's been my experience in teaching and studying that in the end, simplicity trumps complexity. At this stage, I will clean up and refine all of the values from the middle tone to the highlight. Now it's time to place in the reflected light, leaving the darkest value to represent the cast shadow accent. If you struggle when you first attempt these assignments, you may actually have some problems with your values. Check out this playlist here. This will help you out with that. On my website underneath resources are step-by-step -step photos of all five forms, as well as other helpful tips for you to do this assignment. A PDF is available for you to assist you to work through this assignment. Link is in the description. If you post your work up online, please tag me and I'd love to see it. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.